Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society Podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. And Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. Parking lot, and uh, you know, two other cars just pulled in in here, so... I feel a little better. Somebody's here. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, yeah. So, for for listeners, uh, Swamp Dog contacted me earlier today. Him and his wife were out, and it's West Side Park, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. and um, you'd sent me some pictures. Uh, you had found uh, two different tracks out there, and I had you go and retake the photos again with a. Uh, ruler tape measure next to them. It's 14 inch track, right. 18 inch track, and um, right. I mean, you, in in one of them, one of them especially, you you can see that there are some toes in there. It's it's very yeah. interesting. Then you've got video of it too. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna have you share what happened because I just saw the video and I just want to hear from you what happened it, it's pretty intense it just happened i mean <laughs> well I, I don't know when i when i called you back and left you the last message about uh, about the video well people i don't know if i'm gonna send this video to jeremiah or if i'm gonna put it on my youtube channel but that's the first footprint I found over here in West Side Park. Okay. Now, here's the other one. All footprints. Big footprints. I am a size. Uh, I think it's on 13. Look big footprints and then I come over here I'm looking this is exciting okay oh yeah right here I should mark these footprints or that's a footprint but there it is and I can actually see one two three four five Five toe prints. Here's my foot. Here's it right there. I'm trying to look for some more footprints, but I don't see none. No more. Now, like I said, I'm in West Side Park in Bala, New Jersey. And as I was taking pictures, because uh, I took pictures before I'm making this video of these footprints, I heard two wood knocks. I'm kind of excited. Maybe that's why I'm talking the way I'm talking, but I am. Yeah, we heard two wood knocks and my, and my wife, Tammy, she ran back in the truck. She doesn't want no parts of this. This is the trail that comes in here, back here. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to document as much as I can. That's why I got it on video. I'm trying to see, but the wood knocks came from that area. There were two wood knocks as I was taking pics of these, but uh, I believe they're uh, you know, big footprints. So, I called to Jeremiah from uh, you know, Bigfoot Society left him a message and we send him uh, the pics on email. Hopefully he gets it today, but, but. 
stuff. What was that? Wait a minute, what was that? Listen, calm down. Something just threw wood in the back of my truck. I uh, don't know. get her out of here probably gonna take her home but I'm I'm coming back I don't know what that was but I'm coming back that's the wood what the you didn't hear nothing no nothing running no footsteps or nothing what <laughs> the I'm out. Uh, I'm taking a video of the foot tracks. And I was saying I'm trying to document as much as I can on video. Just, just in case I hear any more wood knocks or have I actually seen anything. So I'm walking down the trail where... Man, I don't know, I'm all messed up here. Where the trail comes in, I'm walking like, I'm walking out the trail, you know what I'm saying? I got the truck behind me. My wife, Tammy, she's in the truck. Look, cause she heard the wood box and she just jumped and she jumped in the truck. And I'm talking and I'm videoing and I'm pointing at where I heard the wood knocks, you know what I mean, like in the general area. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, I hear something crash on the back of my truck, and I turned around. I was so scared. It's all right, Tammy. Uh, you can, man, you can tell Tammy is, is shooken up, and I, I can totally understand that. Oh man, that's wild. But so I went back to the truck and I asked her, what was that? You know what I mean? And she says that she don't know something banged up against the back of the truck. I look in the back of the truck and I got like wood in the back of my truck. Matter of fact, it's still in the back of my truck. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to tell you how, uh, the piece of wood I'm looking at right now is about, I don't know, three, four inches thick. I still got it in the back of my truck. Uh, so I didn't get excited or anything. I just stayed calm. But she was flipping out. And I'm trying to videotape the area that my back of my truck is uh, facing. I didn't see nothing. I didn't hear nothing. I asked Tammy, I guess she heard footsteps, or did she hear anything running in the back of the woods? Oh, I just heard it. And she, she didn't hear nothing. All she heard was a big bang. And I still got the wood. And I still got the wood in the back of my truck. And then when you text me back and ask me if I want to go back in there to measure, I'm like, I really don't want to. My wife says, I'm not going back in there. And I said, listen, you'll be all right. So we went back in there. We didn't hear nothing. 
That's when I send you the other pictures with the measuring tape. One print was 14 inches. One was 18. There's a few things that I observed. The first thing I observed was when I had called you back the first time, I asked you right away, hey, can I record? And you said no. That tells me a lot. I mean, first off, that was thrown really hard at your truck. Did you hear the bang? I mean, that was, yeah, yeah. And that's what flipped her out. I mean, I'm oh, not going to lie. I got scared too because I knew that was, you know what I mean? I was like, the heck was that? I mean, you know, but the thing was, when I went back on the back of my truck and you I mean I faced my phone towards the woods, I didn't see nothing, I didn't hear nothing. You seen the video all the way to the end, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also, yeah. you're not you're not facing the truck when you're taking the video, and something is thrown at the truck. So right. the ang- like the angle, it it wouldn't work. You know, if let's say if I'm playing devil's advocate, Swamp Dog, right? Uh-huh. And I'm saying, you know, let's say, well, maybe Swamp Dog threw the 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 <laughs> stick at the truck. It wouldn't have worked the angle like yeah. it would not have because I've, I've watched it more than a few times in the short amount of okay. time since I got it. Um, man, that's, that's crazy. So even let's say, man, I'd be, I'd be careful of that area swamp dog. Let's say, even if it isn't a Bigfoot, you have something or someone well, that it chucked a huge if stick it was a at your truck. Being, I yeah. Uh, I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, there's Just something going on in there. The yeah. I don't know that. But the thing was, when I'm taking pictures of the foot press, because I told Tam, I said, I'm going to send this to Jeremiah. Yeah. I heard the two wood knocks. Mm, mm-hmm. And then, that's why Tammy, she went in the truck. She goes, I want no parts of this, you know what I mean? So, so then she kept telling me, let me hurry up, hurry up, whatever. So then I said, you know what? I'm going to videotape this. So then, I mean, I could document it more mm-hmm. and, and show the area. And hopefully I hear more wood knocks or, or even like me, I hear something running or something. And as I'm walking up the trail, Right, because I heard the wood knocks on that area. So, you mean, that's why I led you on walking that way. My wife's in the truck, and also I heard a bang. I was like, what? I was like, what the hell? Do you know what I mean? But you mean, I'm facing the area where I heard the wood knocks, and something was thrown by Jimmy at my truck from behind me. So, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's wild. Uh, it's wild. Uh, I'm all, you know, I mean, like I said, my hair are still standing like on my arms, my legs. I can feel my hair standing. This one here, she's she's scared to death. She says she's not coming back here no I'll more. I'll never come back here ever again. I I don't never. blame you, and I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't force her for sure. You've been through a lot. That's very that's a very scary situation that you're in, from I what never, I could tell. Yeah. Never do it like this and I'm I'm really petrified I don't just be, just be careful if if you do go back there okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah I'm uh you know, I'm good I'm good I'm good yeah. I just I just that just startled the hell out of me because I didn't see it coming or you know what I'm trying to say mm-hmm when I heard that big bang, I'm like, what the hell was that? You it's know really I mean? loud. Like, yeah. it's super loud. Uh, yeah. I wonder, can you look at those sticks and just like look really closely and see if maybe there's any hairs or anything on them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking. About... Hold on one minute. I'm looking. Yeah. I'm going to look real good here. I'm going to take these home with me anyway, but... Oh, absolutely, yeah. But, uh, yeah, because I'm going to leave them in the truck. I'm going to see. Yeah. But, no, I don't see nothing. Hold on one minute. Um, 
Uh, here, I'm picking up the other piece right now. Yeah, I don't see anything. No. All right. I don't see the hair or gotcha. uh, anything like gotcha. that. Yeah. It's such a such a wild. I was just glad you thing. got the video because like, yeah. she was trying to send you the video, and then like all three times it says. What did it say? Like a couldn't send or some it's shit? In a drop box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Said. But you, mean, yeah. I'm glad you got your video. Man, be, so, wow. I'd, be careful I'll out there, what. Swamp Dog. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm out of the woods. I'm in the parking lot right now. You okay. Know what I mean? Yeah, but, good. Uh, good. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna take her home. Yeah, she's, take care right of her. Now, take care of her first. Right now, she's not doing too good. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, all right. I appreciate you letting me know the story. The story continues, and I'm actually talking to another uh, gentleman, a uh, researcher in the Pine Barrens, uh, later on uh, to get some more oh, yeah. info about this area. So, keep an ear out for that swamp dog. You'll, I think you'll like it. So, yeah. Yeah, if you want to send him that video, what is he, a researcher? Or what, I mean, what is he? He is, yeah, yeah, yep. Well, send him that video and then send the pics too and see what he thinks. And then, All right. uh, yeah, I don't know, you know. And then, you know, you may, if you want to put this like video on the channel, go right ahead, you know what I mean? I'll All just, right, so I have, I have the okay to use any of the stuff you yes, sent. You do. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Yes, people can see what the hell's going on, actually yeah. going on back here. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you, brother. All right, my brother. Yep. Keep her safe. All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. All right, Bigfoot Society. I've got the privilege of talking to a Bigfoot researcher from Southern New Jersey that reached out to me. Uh, his name is Jacob. How's it going tonight, Jacob? I'm doing good, Jeremiah. Thank you so much for letting me on your show. Absolutely. I was excited that you reached out to me. And uh, there's some really cool places that we're going to be going uh, tonight from what you had uh, told me a little bit through the email. But you are mm -hmm. uh, you reached out because you're very familiar with uh, what Swamp Dog was talking about. Uh, listeners remember the Swamp Dog episodes. Um, actually, I just talked to Swamp Dog uh, earlier. I'm going to put his his phone, his last phone call at the beginning of this episode <clears throat> because, uh, well, it'll be it'll be public then. Listeners will already know, but I'll let you know, Jacob, real quick. So that uh, West Side Park mm -hmm. that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So he was there uh, earlier today, and he's been checking out that park, looking for Bigfoot stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. So he had some photos of tracks that he sent over to me and, um, it, it gets, it gets a little weird because, um, they're taking photos of the tracks. They hear wood knocks in the background in the, in the park. Right. And so mm -hmm. he's like, I've got to start to take video of this for Jeremiah. Cause I want to send it to him. Uh, mm -hmm. the video as he's taking video of the uh, tracks and, and such, all of a sudden there's a huge crash. Uh, these large sticks are thrown in the back of his truck um, and his wife is just is freaking out, understandably so, since it's a massive crash. So I was like, then I was talking to him after, I was like, dude, you probably should get out of there. <laughs> At yeah, least, you know, would, if your if your wife wants to, and she was like, take me out of here. I was like, you need to get her out of there, you know? And then oh, you make the call, but it's like, just be careful. This, this area sounds pretty wild, but, um, uh, that's, <laughs> that's where we're at right now with the story. So, you know, Jacob, cause I haven't released that part yet. It just happened today, wow. but, um, is there anything else, uh, let's start with this. So, uh, tell me how you got into your, uh, you know, it, you told me that you've been, uh, researching Bigfoot for about, uh, 10 years, I believe in, in Southern New Jersey, but kind of, yeah, talk me into it. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I've 
I've been uh, pretty much uh, researching Bigfoot for a few years, uh, ever since I had an exp- a pretty crazy experience a few years back with what I to what I believe to have been one. Um, basically, starting out, I've grown up in South Jersey my entire life. I'm 26 years old. Um, I've pretty much lived 10 minutes away from Philadelphia, and I live in Camden County, New Jersey. So I'm I'm right in the smack middle dab between the river and the pine barrens. So I'm within about a 25 minute to 30 minute drive of the pine barrens of New Jersey. Uh, basically I've grown up pretty much exploring all as many areas in that general vicinity as possible. Um, I was growing up, I've always been like a huge fan of wildlife and snakes and, all sorts of like cool critters that you can find out in the trails. Um, so I was always out there doing stuff like that and, and, and researching, you know, wildlife and all sorts of that. And I've always kind of had a thing for uh, cryptids and, and, and weird encounters and, and make UFOs and stuff because I remember as a little kid, I would go to the, I'd be the kid in the paranormal section, you know, you know, 10 year old me looking around for some books on Loch Ness Monster, on Bigfoot, on, on, on Champ. Like I would go and, and I would digest these books and New Jersey actually has a book called uh, Weird New Jersey. It's like, it's a cat, it's a magazine catalog and usually you get a new copy updated copy of the weird New Jersey magazines every couple months, every year you would get like a new updated version with new, uh, new stories in it. New, um, uh, new, new, um, uh, paragraphs of, of different types of, uh, things in New Jersey. So I would always dive into that. You would get your local legends, which would be like crazy, like, like famous people, like local celebrities. Um, you would get your abandoned places. You would get your, you know, weird structures that people would have in their, in their yards, like big, like, like big, like Eiffel towers or something in your backyard. You would also have, uh, weird places. There's, there's a place up in North Jersey called the, um, gateway to hell which is like a, a crazy weird place and there's a place called the devil's tree but there'd also be a section in there known as the czar beasts and this is where you would get your local legends of cryptids local legends of ufos and local legends of like uh the, uh, the jersey devil the jersey devil is the biggest uh cryptid hands down in in new jersey that's the one that gets the most attention but I remember reading something about big red eye in in Northern New Jersey. And I was blown away because I was always under the impression that Bigfoot was a North Pacific Northwest phenomenon. And I really didn't believe that New Jersey, New Jersey would harbor anything like that. And I remember as a kid, I, I had a pretty, you know, budding interest in that type of stuff. I, I remember my grandma would tell me stories about, the stories that she would hear as a kid when she was in Ohio and she'd tell me about the grass man. She would tell me about, you know, all the Bigfoot stories that she, she, she heard. Uh, she would also, I would also indulge heavily in stuff like in search of uh, all sorts of, you know, like C list um, monster movies with Bigfoot in it. Uh, I would, I was a huge fan of monster quests. That was probably the one thing, but deep down I've always kind of thought that it was a fairy tale and it was all fun and games and it, it was, it was cool. And it, it was awesome that all these stories are out there, but i never truly gave any of it credence. And I really wasn't one to jump on that bandwagon of this thing's real. So fast forward, I lose, I kind of slowly lose my interest in this sub- subject. You know, I, I get into school, girls become a thing, you know, I get into new hobbies and a lot of the Bigfoot folklore stuff just kind of drained away. And I still had a little interest in it, but it wasn't anything really crazy. But that's where I began to kind of pursue my interest in snakes and, and reptiles and amphibians. And Southern New Jersey has a very unique ecosystem as in the Pine Barrens, which is a 1.1 million acre uh, 
a section of forest that takes up multiple counties. It lays over a 17 trillion gallon aquifer, which is basically an underground reservoir that has some of the Earth's cleanest water. And this is known as the Kirkwood Cohansey Aquifer and expands from southern New Jersey all the way to central Jersey. And this this area is unique with different types of plants and different types of wildlife. It's uh, it was formed over the past million year, couple million years. Um, basically, if you picture sand dunes on a beach, I don't know if they have any beaches over in Iowa or anything, but they're they're sand dunes that are covered in pine trees and all sorts of lichens and ferns and, and blueberry bushes, huckleberry bushes, you name it, all sorts of treat food, treat foods, treat um, berries. Um, also surrounded there's areas with swamps. There's areas with um, large upland pine oak forests. And there's also just large amounts of gravel and, and white sand and a sugar sand that pretty much covers the expanse of the Pine Barrens. So in short, like this was the area that I was very interested in, in checking out and, and hiking more. So fast forward a little bit, I, I got involved with uh, doing snake research voluntarily, volunteering for the, the state of New Jersey. Uh, there's a program. I'm, I don't want to really get rid of, rid of the name or get out the name of the program that I was volunteering for. But our biggest goal in volunteering for this program was to go out, search for um, habitat, good habitat for rare, rare animals, mostly snakes. Um so that we could send information and data back to the state and we would pretty much just we would figure out what is areas that may need to be managed like if there's areas that are too thick that need to be cut down if there's areas that need more open sand we were basically trying to connect and figure out what are the best habitats to preserve and how can forestry and the state move forward with preserving and habitats and keeping them, you know, good for rare and endangered animals. So a part of this program, we would, we would choose places on maps and we would go to these places on maps and we would go there and we would research and we would look for these rare and endangered animals. And we ended up looking at this place for a, a few months that we were very interested in checking out. Um, it had the right habitat. It was this very large open area that these snakes were uh, fond of. Um, it was pretty pretty close to um, some some pretty thick forest. It was about it, it was about you know, not too far from the main road. So it was going to be easy access to an extent to get back to it. So we decided to, me and my friend decided to take a uh, trip out there to get a lay of the land and check it out. And this would, we would go out there around June of 2018 and we were going to go out there and, and, and do some research and, and try to see if we can't bring back any information about this general area. So we get there and this area was along Route 206 in Atlantic County and it's a a large paleo dune that is in the state forest and before I go into more detail about it it's very close in vicinity to a large cranberry uh, a, a large cranberry facility that would with multiple bogs where cranberries were annually harvested packed and sent over to ocean spray and this this was a large area where cranberry farmers would all come together and they would they would pick the blueberries and they would harvest them so this was just just within a mile of the area we were going to search so anyway we get there and we we get out and we decide to take a a small overgrown trail that goes into the state forest which was going to go into the area we wanted to check out so we get out and right away it was a very wet wet spring i remember and it was everywhere was flooded it was an absolute it was an absolute 
uh, catastrophe to get back there. Yeah, we had we had we had boots on. We had mud boots up to our knees, um, and we 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 pushed forward and we just found a way to get back there. We ended up hiking through probably about a mile and a half of some thick green briar thorns. Um, about the water was very close to going over our boots a couple of times and it was pretty, we had a lot of cuts and, 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 uh, scratches after that hike up to the, the dune. So we get up there and the dune is absolutely beautiful. And if I can try to visual, have you visualize what the dune looks like, it's a large open area, mostly pretty much the canopy is like 70 to a hundred percent open. It, it's a large, it's a large bald that you'll see on maps in the middle of the woods. And it's really sandy. It, it's dry land that comes up above the swamp swampy area that was surrounding it. And this is imperative for stuff to escape the, you know, the, the cold, the water and be able to bask and forage and, and nest and do all that good stuff. So, this was, we get there and it was like beautiful. We, it, we couldn't have asked for a better area to set up and start looking around. It was, it was June. So blueberries were pretty much peak. Um, ton, there was tons of plump blueberries on every bush. There was flowering ground plants and there was all sorts of lichen and, and it looked pretty untouched from people. Um, it was, it was, it was a pretty nice spot. So we get our stuff down and we, we start setting up and we're kind of just going to walk around the paleo dune and just try to figure out like where we want to start at, where we want to look, look at, and if we can find any signs of like snakes, which is our main goal. So we, we we end up hiking into, so how the paleo dune looks, it's almost like a fork. So one part, goes towards the um, main road that runs through the state forest and another fork goes into deeper into the state forest. So we decided to take the fork that goes in deeper into the state forest where there's much thicker woods. So we're just kind of walking, we're talking, we're checking stuff out and we walk upon this uh, really old hunter stand. Like this thing isn't your regular walmart hunter stand like this is a a straight up shack in the trees like someone took a bunch of time to make this almost like a blind 20 feet up in the trees so i remember initially seeing that and i kind of started to get spooked a little bit because the thing about the pine barrens you're sur- you're surrounded by three major cities you got new york north of you philadelphia to the west and baltimore south and you're you're surrounded by you know millions of people you know what in sort in different suburbs of different cities so a lot of times people will kind of go out to the pines and hide out and and and, and lay low for a while and you don't know who you're going to run out to and i still say to this day like i my biggest worry in the woods is people and i i remember just distinctly seeing that deer stand and I'm like thinking to myself, it looks like someone could live in there. Cause there's a, there's a hook, there's a roof, there's, there's everything you would need to escape the elements. So we, we end up walking up to it and we're kind of checking around and, and, you know, I'm a little uneasy, but I'm, I'm making the best I'm making do the best I can. And my friend kind of is just like, Hey man, I'm going to go walk off over here. And I think he, he was going to use the bathroom. I don't remember the exact details of why he walked off, but I was like, all right, man. So I'm still looking around, still checking out the area and I'm, I'm looking in this area. The, the tree stand kind of sits on a, on a ridge and the lower area, there's a very wet area. And around this time of the year, it's, extremely thick with with uh all sorts of uh plants and trees and i remember i began to hear what sounded like bipedal walking coming from left to right and this was about a good distance in probably 70 to 100 yards in, just just crunch 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 so immediately i'm already on edge about me worried about people and i kind of 
I, I think that there's somebody walking up to, you know, go back to their shed in the middle of the woods. So I start, I start yelling out in the woods. I'm like, who's there? Who, who's that? And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get a response from something that's not responding. That's clearly walking on, you know, two legs. And I'm like, I'm sort I'm like looking, I'm gazing into the woods. I'm, I'm really like trying to get a look at who is coming. If there's anyone, you know, going to be coming through the trees. And that's when, I get like a split second look at what looked to be this sheen, like this greasy black, like hair sheen moving from tree to tree as it continued to move through the swamp. And, you know, I estimated at the time that was probably about six foot off the ground around that. So, you know, I see that for, not long enough for me to get a really good look at it, but like long enough to know it wasn't, like imagining anything and this sheen ended up going through some trees and I began to hear the steps a couple more times and that's when it just stopped and I remember thinking that it either heard me and went to check me out or looked over at me to check me out or it just walked off where I couldn't hear it anymore so I freaked out and I kind of go and grab my friend and he's like hey like I, sh- I think i found a shed let's check this out this looks really cool and i'm like now nah, dude we're going we're going and he's he's like what's wrong and what's like what's going on and 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 i told him like i think there's some dude back there like stalking us because at the time i don't know if people were hunting out there i wasn't really too too good knowledgeable on like the hunting walls and regulations, but you know, no one's going to be out there hunting in, in black, uh, that time of the year in June. So we end up kind of hiking back and, you know, it, it turned into like it, the hike was very much put in half because we hurried back to the car so fast. And I just remember getting back and, you know, Bigfoot was never on my mind. I just fake thought that, I spooked some weird piney dude who was out here laying low and trying to not be caught by people. And I was pretty, pretty much sure that there's, there, there was a guy back there and I was, you know, I remember walking back making sure he wasn't following us or anything. And we never had anything follow us back, but we got out of there and I really didn't return to that site for a while. And I just didn't never had that cross my mind until probably a couple of weeks after where I think I heard something like a recent report or it was something along those lines. And that's where I really kind of had that start to drift in my head. Like, could it have been, was it? And I was like, you know, nah, there's no way. So I ended up just heading, heading, um, back you know a couple like a couple a couple years later and just to get another lay on the land and ever since then that site's kind of been burned uh from a controlled burn or not a controlled burn it was, a, it was actually an uncontrolled burn that burned like thirteen thousand acres and you know it's not the same that the shed's pretty much burned down completely um but i was able to get a better look at that area and in, in, in that general area and see that whatever it was was probably about 75 yards away from me and it was within you know as far as my sight goes it would have made sense that we caught like a small glimpse of it but you know i i ended up kind of not going back really ever since the, the burn and um you know that's that's about like that's pretty much how like my first encounter went out in the pines. Um, that, so that is just wild. Um, I mean that it, it really sounds like, you know, after that you were really into it. Uh, it, it probably changed the, the trajectory of your, your life really. Um, have there been other reports from that same area? Have you ever, is that something you've researched out or? So, yeah, um, I can, I can actually let you know that there there's a, um, in that area, there is a, um, 
there's a director for a, a, a Pine Barrens canoeing uh, company, and they basically have weekends and, and weekday excursions where people go out kayaking and canoeing and they lead hikes and stuff. And the guy who directs is the director there. He has had lots of vocalization incidents in that surrounding area. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to give you another story here that from that same area, probably a mile away from where I had my encounter. And this is an area that has had documented and undocumented activities documented as far as like BFRO and stuff. But, um, this encounter was something that kind of blew me away. And when, you know, when I heard it and how close it was to my original encounter, it, 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 it shook me a little bit. Um, and I'm actually still looking for the people to maybe like come and talk and would love to be able to have a conversation with them and, and, and just get to know exactly what happened. But anyway, in around the same year, 2018, um, there was a group of truck campers who were camping on a, um, on a plot of land, uh, just, just, um, in like the, around the Northern part of Wharton state forest. And this was an area close to Atco raceway. And this is a area with a big power line cut. And I don't want to give the exact location of where the incident happened at, but the area is surrounded by swamp. There's a power line cut. It's got everything that you would want for an area to truly be squatchy. Um, anyway, these truck campers were out of state and they were camping in this particular section. Um, basically they were camping on a dead end road that was in this high area in the swamp. And basically these trucks have like cabs on them and, and they use the trucks almost as tents and they, they camp inside the trucks and they're all, they're all jacked up. You know, they all got, they all have all the accessories, all the lights, all the, all the cool stuff you would want on a, on like a lifted truck. So they're, they're camping back there and they, they're all sleeping and it's around two in the morning where one of them wakes up to, um, the sound of her door handle jiggling on the back of her car, on the back of the, of the, of the, of the uh, truck on the tailgate. And she immediately thinks that, okay, maybe there's a, one of the, one of my friends or one of the guys is trying to get in to grab something or trying to grab uh, something from the truck. So she gets up and she ends up turning on the light and the back light to the back of her truck. And when she turns on the light, she just sees this huge torso standing behind the truck, jiggling the door handle, just as wide, almost as wide as the truck. And, you know, she, she remember she was realigned that it was a very hairy torso, black leathery skin. And, once she saw that, she screamed as loud as she could, freaked out, and she ended up waking everybody up. This thing tears off to the side, and pretty much she's trying to wake up everyone to so they can get out of there. So they, they pretty much hastily pack up, and they're, they, they, they get out of there, and they end up getting lost, and they're out in an area they're not familiar with and they're looking around to find an air, you know, place to get back onto the main road. And that's when this, uh, director of the, of this, uh, adventure company ends up walking up on them at three in the morning. <laughs> and he, he, he likes to walk his dog at night, um, out there. And that's where he, that's when he, you know, hears a lot of his vocalizations and stuff. And he, scares the crap out of him because he lets the dog run up and, you know, the dog's all, you know, letting him pet, pet her and, and the, he's running around. And that's when he got the story from them that this thing tried to get into one of the trucks and they pretty much all freaked out. 
and got out of there and he gave her gave them directions how to get out of there and they never returned to that spot again and they were camping there annually every year until recently that is probably one of the most intense uh dude that's nuts is did you say it's a bfro report or not it's not a it's not no wow it should be but it's not (laughs) okay oh man that's wild i can't imagine like especially not being a bigfoot person i'd be like i'm out of (laughs) here You just saw a monster in your rear view window. I'd be the same way. I would be out of there completely. (laughs) Dude, that is amazing. And that was like, you said that was close to where your, your Mm -hmm. encounter was. Oh, geez. Yeah. Within a couple miles, man. Yes, sir. (sighs) Wow. That is, you know, the more I hear about this, I look into the South Jersey area. It is just so intense it's incredible that more people are not talking about it you know and we were talking earlier about how you would listen to the the first swamp dog episode and you know what are what are your thoughts about like the stories that he was sharing about you know what happened around uh vineland and in those different places oh well you know me and my friend had got a thing like you know these Jersey these Jersey Sasquatches they got living at it, dude. All right, forget about it. Forget about it. You there know? you go. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Swamp Dog really blew me away. Um, I'm very familiar with that general location of where the airport is, and where Swamp Dog had his initial encounter, and that's what prompted me to message you about it. That area is one of the one of the more hot spot areas probably in the southern part of the state. And that area actively has um, a habituation going on just north of that uh, airport. And I, I, I relayed uh, the information of like the general spot. Um, I'm sure if I got talked to Swamp Dog or something, he would probably confirm it's the same area but um i'm friends with some people who are having active active uh habituations with uh multiple sasquatches in that area and it's another area that's not far away from a road crossing uh, a few years back um just probably 10 miles west of there or east of there and it's certainly an area that has tons and tons of activity. I don't go down that area a lot. A lot of my research I do is in Wharton State Forest and some of the larger portions of the Pine Barrens. But it's an area that for sure is 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 active. And when, like I said, when I heard that information, that, that Swamp Dog has had activity in that area it it makes a lot of sense so it's just it's wild to think because you know his encounter is back in i want to say the late 80s early 90s in that airport and there's still you know sounds like still things going on today um just for listeners that might not be familiar with the term habituation is there any way you can maybe break that down uh exactly what they're experiencing on this uh the property that you're saying sure so habituation is basically this family is actively having sasquatches coming in very close and proximity to their property so they'll you're not really supposed to but they'll feed them they'll have they'll get within you know they'll get pretty close to them they'll They'll um, look in windows, and the term habituation basically means you're you're habitating them. You're keeping them around. You're you're either keeping them around with food. You're keeping them around with uh, good habitat. You're keeping them around. Maybe it, it could just be as simple as that. They live next to a uh, waterway, and they use that waterway actively to get from point A to point B. That and this waterway actually goes from all the way up and more more towards me all the way down 
into some deeper, thicker parts of South Jersey. So they use this waterway to navigate up and down. And they've gotten multiple footprints um, in and around this waterway. So for the most part, I think that the, I think that's a really good way to put what habituation is. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to really get on their property and, and uh, like truly be in the same area truly be a little frightening to, but um, it's, it's, it's um, definitely something that is ongoing and it's, it's in that same section of uh, section of woods that I think Swamp Dog had his encounter in the 1980s. I think it's incredible. Oh man. I, you know, so habituations to be honest, freak me out. Um, I talked to a lot of people, you know, over the years I've talked to a lot of people and it's just, I personally feel that feeding them is never a good idea because there will be a time when either you forget to feed them or you run out of food or something. And then that just leads into not good situations. That's, that's my personal feelings on it, but For sure. man, it's For sure. It's bad news. It is for sure. There's a park but, that he mentions. Um, uh, do you know, have you ever had any dealings with that, that park, the West side park at all? Uh, tell you the truth. I have not. Okay. Um, it's um, an area that it's definitely connects to that section of forest where the habituation is happening at. And it, it makes a lot of sense that that area has them hanging out and stuff. I, in fact, I might want to get back down to that area probably probably pretty soon and really check it out i only live about half hour away from these areas so i definitely think that i'll be back out there but as far as like reason as far as like stuff i that has happened there that i know of I, I don't have anything wow so you're saying that the same area that swamp dog it earlier today had had things happen you're saying it's in very close proximity to this habituation site that's brother that's that same waterway that yeah. i was talking about where that runs through the behind the purpose property that same waterway passes through that same park that goes oh, up my through goodness. the habituation they travel up and down that waterway um uh like it's a highway you know i can only i can only like i can't say that for sure unless i have repeated evidence and repeated um track casts or whatever in that general area but that's what i would i would hypothesize that the, the same waterway that swamp dog the lake that that is is it's next to that airport and the in the same waterway that goes down from way up past there where the property is at all the way down into like Cumberland County and stuff like mm -hmm. that. That whole area is just loaded with recent and like historical reports. It's absolutely wild because you would never guess it by looking at New Jersey on a map, but it's like <laughs> the more that I interview people from your area and I've never had, you know, I've talked to people from all over the U S and I've never had a location where it's like people are just hitting me up like, yeah, here, man, or here, or it's had this happen. And it's just, it's definitely, there's a, there's a something uh, special going on in the South Jersey area yeah. for sure. And people don't know each other either. It's all people who are, complete strangers that are mm. having these encounters in the same general areas. It's truly, it's truly crazy. And it's, it's, it, I'm beside myself by seeing this, this type of stuff come forward and really learn that, that this stuff is happening in the same area that a lot of other people that I know, I, I knew these people have been having this habitual habituation for two years and wow. well, it was probably longer than that, but for as far as long as, as I've known them. Hmm. You alluded to this earlier. Um, does, does this area have quite a historical, uh, quite a history of Sasquatch interactions or? Yes, there's, um, there's a couple BFR reports in that, in that vicinity of 
of that area that that are probably from like the 80s or the 70s and as far as like you're gonna get a lot of south jersey and new jersey people just aren't very open to sasquatch in general in fact i think more people would want to fight you for believing in sasquatch over the jersey devil or you know vice versa and the people don't open up about this stuff so a lot of the stuff you hear in south jersey it's like just word to mouth and and people will tell you like hey there's some weird stuff that goes on out there i had this happen to me when i was a kid or i had this happen to me uh you know 10 years ago people don't really like go online and post stuff they don't really like to put themselves out there especially in new jersey where you're so you, you got so many jobs and you got so many stores and 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 you're just you got tons and tons of people it's less accepted down here that unless you legitimately have an encounter finding someone else who believes in big first or, or has seen one is like finding a needle in a haystack frankly it's it's um so a lot of the stuff you hear is in that is through the the word word of mouth and i've heard a lot of word of mouth in this general area of uh, South Jersey and there's a lot of people out there who have stuff that had that have had stuff happen in this vicinity in this general area that just don't want to come through forward with it and I'm hoping that whoever hears this and whoever has had activity in this in this vicinity you know I'm hoping that these interviews with, with, with me or Swamp Dog or whoever else brings out people out of the woodworks to come forward and report this stuff because, you know, coming out and, and you know, ha- having multiple people come out in full force and put out multiple data points and stuff, like, it, it'll be a lot easier to track this type of stuff in the future. Oh, absolutely. I t- totally, totally agree with you. I had a question come to mind a little earlier and do you feel that, so you've got most people focusing on Jersey devil. Do you think there's any like um, connection between the two or maybe like some, I don't, I don't so, know. Yeah. I don't know how I'm so, trying to say this, but uh, I think yeah, you get it. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start off by saying, I don't believe in the Jersey devil. Okay. I know I'm pissing off a bunch of people saying that, but <laughs> I, I don't, I don't believe in it. I think maybe possibly it could be like a weird, like entity thing. I don't really, I actually think that it's a misidentified Sasquatch that people have seen over the past, you know, a couple hundred years. I mean, you think about it like, uh, you know, red eyes, big, big wings that could just be like arms with hair screams in the night. It sounds like a Sasquatch. Um, so a lot of the reports I've heard of the Jersey devil, including like some historical stuff. Um, a lot of them say the same thing. It's got red eyes. It screams like a banshee in the night and it, uh, you know, smells bad. It's got these big wings that, you know, people don't really ever see. Um, so I think there is, yeah, I think there's a lot of connection that you can, you can put towards that, uh, them being like, like connecting the Jersey devil to Sasquatch. I mean, I can't explain when people hear something on their roof walking with hooves or, I can't explain like certain weird tracks, but I, I, I do think that like there a lot of, a lot of it could be um, misidentified for sure. That's, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I was gotcha. like, it just, it feels like, you know, sometimes I, I look into that story and it just, it feels like, it's got a big, big, Bigfoot related. You, you were nice enough yeah. to send over a uh, audio clip. I want to make sure that we play that. Um, mm-hmm. Can you sure. uh, give the background of what we've got going on in this sound clip? Yeah. Um, this is not my audio clip. This is a friend of mine's, uh, that was with me on this uh, particular, this is a recent expedition past, uh, this, uh, this past spring. And this was in the Jersey Pine Barrens. So we're out on a, on a, tr- on a dirt trail along the large lake out in the pines, middle of, uh, middle of nowhere, like Burlington County. And we're actually 
were having some pretty active paranormal activity going on. We had like a, uh, a, 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 a weird, it was an EMF, EMF uh, meter out there going off and, and, and there's some mediums there. We, we had like a weird, like paranormal kind of night, but we still had time to do our whoops and do a couple wood knocks. So I think this was following someone doing a whistle or someone doing a, uh, some sort of provocation. And uh, what entails is a, a, a distant whoop that most of the uh, attendees heard. All right, let's check it out. Did you? That was a whoop. I'm going to play it one more time because it is, it's, per, it's a little faint, but I'm going to do it one more time. So people, and it's right after um, that, the first, um, sound that you hear it's right after it yep here we go did you that was a whoop yeah that is so crazy <laughs> yeah, man. wow that's the classic pine baron's bigfoot whoop <laughs> Whew, have you have you heard that multiple times when you've been out there so my the BFRO expedition in 2021 that I went on was probably the absolute craziest. That's really? where I heard this thing come up close and just start whooping at us. I feel when I could go into detail uh, of yeah, that. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Don't want to, but anyway, I remember. So following my 2018 uh, encounter out in the pines, I, I, I definitely had like an interest still in, in the subject. And, and I, I remember coming across this, this expedition that was going to happen out in the Pine Barrens. And I remember at the time I was kind of thinking like, you know, I, 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 sh I should try to go on one of these, see what's going on, you know? And at the time I'm very signed, I'm still scientific minded, but I was very skeptical, skeptical about maybe what I experienced. I wasn't really truly sure. So I decided to go into, into this expedition and see what these people do, they how they pr conduct their research and and, and just kind of check out, um, check out, um, just knock something off my bucket list. Pretty much was was my main thing. So I remember preparing for it and getting to the expedition um, Thursday night. Um, it was like. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I never camped before. I never did anything like that. So I ended up having the leader um, of that expedition helping me with the tent and, and getting all that done squared away. So for the most part, like, I'll, I mean, I'll kind of, I'll probably just kind of skip over for first, the first night, the first night was very, not, not too much happened. We, we did this, like this, what they call the, um, it's called a, it's called a Pied Piper routine. So two people, two groups will uh, actually walk um, with each other, and then they'll split up. And usually at a fork in a trail, or maybe there's two trails next to each other. One group will go one way, the other group will go the other way, and there'll be another group kind of sitting just off the trail with like thermal cameras and and, and uh, thermal imagers, and they'll just just see if anything is following us or or paralleling us and. They'll they'll go out. They'll they'll kind of they'll walk. They'll they'll do provocations towards each other. You know they'll howl. They'll whoop. they they'll they'll knock, and they'll see if they can't have anything come follow us back to camp. This is the main goal of the Pied Piper routine. So that night, you know, we really didn't have anything happen. I was pretty unconvinced, and I had to go to work the next day. So I ended up just calling it a night. I left. Um, I was going to return the next day for the um, second night of the expedition. So I get back to the the campground. Uh, I meet up with uh, some people to go out. And we're going to do some day scouting of some possible locations we could check out for the nighttime. And we get out and, you know, we have a nice day spent kind of walking around. Didn't really have anything happen. We actually went to an area that there was a 2018 road crossing um, incident 
in, in, in this one section of state forest that we were camping at. And it was just kind of cool to go there and kind of see an area where something was there and something crossed and kind of get like an idea of the habitat. So we ended up, you know, taking some pictures, checking it all out. And we had headed back to camp to get ready for the, the next night of the expedition. So, the next night we were going to go to an area known lovingly as Kevin's pond, which is the name of a, um, a researcher who actually passed away, um, somewhat recently. And he, we, we deemed the pond after him, but at the time it wasn't called that because he was still alive. So we were going to go there and we were going to have one team. I think one team was elsewhere and, we had another team at this particular location and what we usually do uh, in a lot of instances, we'll come out to a certain area and we'll just kind of sit there for a while, maybe like an 45 minutes to an hour. And we will just be silent. We usually let the woods kind of settle back around us after driving through them with pickup trucks and stuff. And we just kind of let, everything come back to calling like the frogs will start calling again birds will start calling and usually we'll we'll give it some time before we decide to do do any provocations so like 45 minutes to an hour pass by and they decide that since i'm the new guy they were going to have me do a whoop so i get up and I, I just, I just, I do this, just really loud whoop into the um, forest. And I remember instantly hearing these three distinct whoops, almost like something was flying, like not flying away, but like moving away from us when I did the whoop. So immediately I was just like, echo? What, what, what the heck was that? Like, I, I, I was pretty blown away by that. And how instant it was when I did the uh, whoop. And I sat back down and we had another person do some stuff, some provocations and didn't, didn't really have any activity. But as I was kind of sitting there listening, you know, when you're in the woods and you're doing this type of research, you end up having better hearing and you're able to kind of bend your hearing to hear for further distances. So I'm kind of sitting there listening and I'm just, you know, I'm hearing coyotes in the, in the distance howling and, and I'm hearing, you know, every occasional distant barred owl going off and the wind picks up and I begin hearing what sounds like, samurai chatter just very distant just just very very like cryptic language sound like mumbling sound and it was very it was very hard to hear but it was clear that there was samurai chatter just going off behind us and i think me and like someone else may have been hearing it at the time but like i said it was so distant you would you it, it was very tough to like get, get a good you weren't able to hear it very well unless the wind was blowing the right way so we're hearing that and this big group of atvers and and dirt bikers kind of end up soiling the party Uh, so we had to once the dirt bikers like move through the area and you know the, the the forest was disturbed all activity like completely ceased and we just decided to call it a night and get out of there and prepare the next day for the final night op. So we, uh, head out, I go home, I get, I get back to, to camp and I, and I just, I just remember sleeping like a baby. And anyway, fast forward to the final night up. A lot of the times during expeditions, there really isn't a lot going on during the day, except for day scouting, eating, um, recap of night ops all the good stuff happens at night so we end up going to an area in the pines known as the bowl now the bowl 
is an area that is the the main researcher has had multiple instances of vocalizations, wood knocks. Um, he had he has her trees pushed pushed over there. It's a pretty active spot, and it was a pretty moonlit night. It was uh, you know probably like a nice cool September night, so it was like sixty degrees. It was a little chilly. And we get to the area and we have a group of girls and we have a group of guys, probably like four guys, four girls. And there's another team across the, the bog from this particular spot that is doing research. And there is, I believe, another team that was further down the bog. So we were trying to kind of cement our positions around this bog where there was a lot of activity uh, the prior night. So we end up splitting up. We're going to keep the girls by themselves at, in the center of the bowl. And they were just going to talk, sing, do all their stuff to try to, you know, bring in something there. They were bait. And we, me and the rest of the guys, we're going to go to, the dam of this particular bog and we were going to sit there and we were just going to listen, do some occasional, you know, howls or whoops to see if we can't, we couldn't drum up anything. And we were going to therm the entire bog to see if anything was going to come into view or, or, or check us out. It was a nice big open area. We had a really good thermal camera. We were hoping to get something visible so we uh are sitting there and i just remember the first part of the night was extremely extremely boring we had nothing happening we had occasional beaver tail slaps in the water and that was the only thing keeping us like listening to anything it was like nothing was going on it, it was deader than you know dead out there um so we're just kind of sitting there we're starting to chat and we're starting to you know kind of do our own thing and you know the one guy's talking to me about my generation and politics and all this other stuff so i'm like getting all uncomfortable and and and, and just weirded out in that situation so while that's going on the radio goes off and this radio call is from the girls at the in the bowl and they're saying hey guys um one of the girls is having a conversation with one right now so immediately i'm like wait what so i'm kind of like right away intrigued by what i'm hearing and we so they decided that i'm the new guy i'm the i'm the new you know new blood per se and i was going to walk down to the bowl with one of the uh, other researchers and you know we we're going to slowly bring people into that area to see if we couldn't capture more evidence of whatever was going on so i'm very i'm not sure what's going on i'm pretty you know i'm beside myself by what i'm hearing and we're walking down this trail towards the bowl and the, the the dam is probably about a 100 yard walk from the bowl and the trail basically how it is is you don't see the you don't see the center of the bowl till you get around this uh, curve in the trail so we're me and this me and the guy are walking up to the curve when we get two extremely loud like wood knocks right to the left of us that were just couldn't have been more than 20 yards, 30 yards away. So I mean, we, I'm, I'm like, you know, freaking out. I'm, I'm, I'm like, cheer that. It's like, of course I heard that keep walking. So they, we kept going towards the bowl. And I think the reason why we didn't spend too much time with the wood knocks is because he, refer to it as being distractions or it being something to take your attention away from something else. So we end up getting to the bowl and just kind of sitting there waiting. And uh, one of the girls is says to the other one, go ahead do it, do it, do a whoop. So she does this really soft, like whoop, 
just very, very, very light. Nothing, nothing too, not, nothing too crazy. And probably about, probably about like a hundred yards away, just we get a response. We get a, a whoop come back from the woods and she does another one. This thing does another one. And you could tell it's getting a little bit closer to us. It's it's like it's almost like we're luring it in with the whoops we're doing. It sounded like it was curious, potentially, you know, maybe a juvenile that was interested. And this thing is whooping at us and it would either whistle or it would whoop and and, and bang the tree or bang on a tree. And you can just kind of hear this thing moving through the moving through the woods, like as it was getting closer to us, and it would whoop at us from a different position. The lady would whoop, and then it would come a little closer, and then whoop again. And it was it was it was like trying to navigate its way towards the bull, maybe to the best position of not being seen or anything. So. I'm listening to this and in my head I'm I'm firing off every possible animal this could be cuz I never heard anything like it in my life and I'm a wildlife nerd I I study everything in the pines as far as owls coyotes I, I listen to all the noises and I and this wasn't one of them nothing that I knew that is natural made this noise and it didn't sound human. It, it was very, it was almost like someone put a howler monkey out there and it just, just whooping at us as it was coming closer. So we're sitting there and this thing goes from probably a hundred yards away to probably within 50 yards of the bowl. And basically we're, we're, we're kind of watching and we're just like listening and we, we begin to, to uh, look up towards the trucks and to the right of the trucks, there's this very large pine tree. And one of the, one of the girls is saying, I see eye shine. I see, I see eyes. So I'm like looking out there. And the first thing I see is the truck red, the red security light on the trucks going off. So I'm like, Oh no, no, no. You're seeing, you're seeing the red trucks. You're seeing the red truck light. So no, 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 not that. Look to the right of that. So I pan my vision over to the right to where the pine tree is at. And there is this bluish eye glow staring at us from behind a tree. And this thing would, would be peeking out and you would kind of see it like almost like as it turns its head. And you would see the one eye, you would see the two eyes again, and they would go behind the tree and it would peek on the other side. And this thing was almost like it was kind of swaying back and forth behind the tree and and like it was trying to get a better look at us. It would crouch down, look on the one side and look on the other side. And it was just this bluish eye tint. It, It looked pretty reflective off the moon, like... It was very, um, it was like a dark blue, like sheen. And I'm just looking at this with like, like tears in my eyes, almost just blown away by what I'm seeing. And in my head, I'm thinking, this isn't, this isn't natural. There, this is, this is no way. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of watching this thing. And as I'm watching the eye glow and looking at this um this in front of me we begin to hear noises behind us in the swamp that we were our backs were towards and from left to right we start hearing this very low like moaning like moan growl i don't know i can't even really explain it it it, like i said it's like this weird moaning noise coming from the swamp it was it was almost like oh just like moaning coming from behind us and it was coming from left to right and it was coming behind coming kind of behind us and you know i looked back up the hill and the the eye shine isn't there anymore and 
all I'm hearing is this, this, this coming from behind us. And, you know, I'm, I'm listening and I'm, I'm like trying to same, trying to rifle off every possible noise I could think of like raccoon coyote. None of, none of those noises were, were making any sense to me. And I think around that time, the moanings kind of stopped and the, we were hearing another distant like noise kind of coming from the area where the uh, eyes were coming from. It was almost like this very sad, mournful, like, 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 like wailing sound coming from the woods. And this was coming from our 11 o'clock and it was panning to the, it was going left. And I remember that two of the girls wanted to split off to try to get better audio of this moaning noise. And I wish that I was able to see the audio that they captured, but they walked, they went off and to follow whatever moaning noise this was. And, you know, things went quiet. And by this time it was about two o'clock in the morning, we're, we're talking to the other team on the phone, on the walkie, you know, we're telling them all the stuff that we just had happen. And of course they're all upset because they didn't have anything happen where they were at. And we, we were just all pretty speechless and floored by this event that took place where we had a juvenile, what sounded like the, a juvenile coming close and whooping at us to the eye glow to kind of something like moving in behind us and what sounded like a, like these sad, like mournful moans coming from the top of the hill. So we left to head back to camp for the final night. And I just remember sitting there thinking like, I'm, I'm, I'm probably never going to be the same after that experience because none of those noises were natural. None of them are anything I've heard before. I went on this expedition, Jeremiah, as somebody who is very scientifically minded. I'll always be skeptical of anything. I was expecting, honestly, I was expecting people in the woods who were going to hear a coyote in the distance or hear an owl calling or a fox vixen scream or anything like that go off. And I was expecting them to jump at everything. And I was blown away to figure out that not only were these people serious and how, how well put they, how well organized they were with everything. But I was blown away to, to see that they, these these noises that everyone hears and these these um, events that people experience are like in fact like very real. So I, I like I said I wasn't really the same after that encounter and that event, and I was kind of put on my butt a little bit. But I just remember wanting to do more research into it and look into more more uh reports and more things and get in touch with other investigators and that's kind of what brought me to doing my own research in a uh in another in, in the state forest there but it, it that was it, it was for sure like one of the craziest nights of my life and I would say anybody, if you have a chance to go on a BFR expedition, even if nothing happens, it is 1,000% worth it to just meet new people, have, camp out in the woods, get to learn about equipment, get to learn about techniques, and get to know get get to know nature and the noises that normal noises you hear in nature, and you never know, like maybe a Sasquatch will stop by that's probably the most intense like bfro story like that's that's a wild wild expedition dude i'm blown yeah. away man yeah. no nothing like that since either i've been on a couple since then and and that was for sure the most crazy 
Was there some really, uh, there must have been crazy audio captured that expedition. <sighs> I know. I, I, must, I know, but I know it, somebody. Know. Yeah. I'm going to try to talk to people and All I'm right. going to try to get, because I know that somebody had to have captured. Like I said, I was, I, I, I messed up being the new guy, not having a recorder or an audio. I, sh- I could have even just had my phone in my pocket. I probably would have captured crystal clear audio by how close yeah. the, the noises were coming. It, it was definitely a, uh, it was definitely a rookie mistake for sure. Well, we've all been there and the, I mean, I'm saying I've been there and you know, you learn from it, but, uh, I, I get it. <laughs> it's hard to forget. For sure. It's hard to forget those mistakes. But man, yeah. Jacob, it has been so much fun uh, chatting with you. It just has just been an incredible amount of information that really is is fleshing out the story of what's going on there. Uh, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Anytime. Thank you for having me. I know that we're we're kind of keeping. Uh, per your request, we are doing a, a first name only. I suppose uh, people could always reach out to me and, you know, if they're like, hey, I know something that might help yeah. this guy. I could, I might yeah. be able to do a, a go between type deal. But um, just putting that out there for listeners that might have had their memories jogged uh, by something that was shared tonight. But um, yeah, Jacob, thank you so much for coming on, man. This has been a pleasure. Thanks again, Jeremiah. Appreciate that.